Okay, welcome to the big time. Now we're starting level three. So level three is going to be a little bit more complicated, and I'm, I'm not going to have our notes to look at. So we're going to work on trying to understand things more holistically here. In this problem, what we see is that we have a circle. This is a tangent, and these are secants. So we can figure a few things out. For instance, this central angle here is 140 degrees. And what that means is that this arc length will also be 140 degrees. What we also know is that this is a radius and that this is a radius, meaning that this is an isosceles triangle. If this is 140 degrees and this is x, well this will also be x. And if we have two x's, then 2x plus 140 equals 180. Therefore, 2x equals 40. Therefore, x equals 20. If we want to find y, well first we need to remember that tangents are perpendicular to radii meaning that the angle formed between these two is 90 and that we also figured out that this is 20 which leaves y equaling 70 degrees. Lastly we have the secant aspect here. We know that this arc is 140 degrees and that this one is 20. We can use this to find z because remember z is the angle formed by intersecting secants. So we can subtract the big angle, the big arc, minus the smaller arc. So 140 minus 20 is 120. Z is going to be half of that. So Z is going to be 120 divided by 2 or 60 degrees. Okay, so that's it for number one. Number two is distinctly different. Number two says if AB equals 5. Well, let's draw that in here. That tells us that the radius of this circle is 5. It also tells us that maybe half the length of the circumscribed square is 5 but we'll work on that later. Find the area of circle C. Well, we know that the radius is 5, so what we're going to do, we're going to square the radius, which gives us 25. We're going to multiply by pi and write units squared. Okay, for the circumference, if we know that the radius is 5, then we know that the diameter is 10. So the diameter times pi will be the circumference, so the answer will be 10 pi. Okay, now we know that. So now it says to find the area of square B, C, D, E. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take the original 25 pi, and what we're going to do is we're going to divide by pi and multiply by 2. So 25 pi divided by pi is 25. When we multiply by 2, it makes 50. So the area of this square over here will be 50 units squared. It now asks us to find B, C, which is the side length. So what we're going to do, we know that square is base times height. So in other words, it's the square root of the area will get us the uh, side length. So if this times this makes 50, then the answer will be the square root of 50. So let's work this out. With the square root of 50, we're going to look for a perfect square. So we'll look for 25 times the square root of 2. The square root of 25 is 5. So BC will be 5 square root of 2. And, of course, the perimeter of the square will be 4 times any side length. So B, C, D, E will be 4 times 5 square root of 2. 4 times 5 is 20, so the answer is 20 square root of 2. Okay, last, finding the area of square F, G, H, I. Well, we're going to go back to the square, or sorry, the area of the circle. The area of the circle was 25 pi units squared. So the big square is going to be 4 over pi. And what that means is we replace the pi with a 4. So when we divide by pi, we get 25. When we multiply by 4, we get 100. So the area will be 100 units squared. When it asks for FG, that means this segment here. So if this is FG, we, we remind ourselves that it has to be base times height. So if the area was 100, we take the square root of 100, which is easy, it's 10, therefore FG is 10. On top of that, the perimeter of square FGHI is going to be 4 times any side length. So if one of them is 10, all of them together will be 40. And we've got our perimeter. Okay, I hope you're good. Um, moving on, this last one's pretty fun. I, I, I like this one. I had fun writing this problem. Um, what we're given right away, what we can notice is that the radius here is 5. It's fair to say that all radii are congruent, therefore this is also 5 and this is also 5. Um, what we can also tell is that this is a tangent. 
and the tangent is perpendicular to a radius, therefore this is 90. Now the first thing we can actually solve, we can't solve x right away, we can actually solve y first. And we can use that using the triangle sum theorem. This angle here is 30, this one is 90. 30 plus 90 makes 120, therefore y is going to be 60 degrees. Now if we know that y is 60 degrees, we can um, use linear pairs to find out that this angle is 120, and then x should be easy as well because after all, this is an isosceles triangle, meaning this is also x. So 180 minus uh, 120 is 60, therefore x has to be half of 60 or 30 degrees. Last variable we're going to solve for is z. So here's z. And the way we have to use this, we have to acknowledge what we know about this triangle. It's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And the one side we do know is this side, which is the short side. So that would be considered A. Z would be considered the B of the 30, 60, 90. Therefore, is A times the square root of 3. So if A is 5, Z is 5 square root of 3. Okay, that about does it for these problems. Um, Watch it a couple of times and I think you'll catch on. These are all familiar, um, familiar concepts and I think you can catch on with multiple viewings. Thanks a lot.